news, we go now to Castor, Louisiana in Bienville Parish, where we are told that the downtown area has basically been leveled. Gwen Campbell joins us now live from there with Earthlink 3 this morning. Gwen, we saw some of those devastating pictures early this morning. How's the cleanup coming? Well, Kelly, if you can tell by the light of day, the damage that we saw in the nighttime hours, when you see it in the daylight, it is truly devastating. I'm in downtown Castro, Louisiana, a town that's about 10 miles southeast of Ringgold, a population of 280. And I'm standing downtown because that is where the tornado hit yesterday evening. And that is where 8 to 10 homes have been destroyed and every single business in downtown Castor, except for the post office. Every single business. I've talked to a lot of people here today, Kelly, uh, and their emotions range from shock to actually just being sad. I want you to listen to the story, though, of one man, Charles Harper, who has owned the general store here in Castor for the last 30 years. Everything he has, everything he owns is tied up in this store, and now he's lost it. And I cried myself to sleep this morning, 3 o'clock. I still cry. <laughs> yeah. I've been there 20 years now. But I had come up to get a loaf of bread. And I got caught right beside it in my, in my truck. And I thought I was going to die. So you're going to rebuild, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll take a little while. Oh yeah, it'll be a while. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <sighs> a lot of sadness and a lot of emotions here, Kelly, when you think about the fact that everything uh, in a small town like this, when you have small businesses, uh, businesses that aren't owned by large franchises, these businesses are built, you know, with the blood and sweat and tears of local families, residents here. Now I need to tell you, the mayor has asked us to get the word out that everyone conserve water because uh, the electricity is still out. Uh, the mayor says that they're down, the water supply is about down to half now. So he's asking everyone in the Castor and Ringel area to conserve water uh, at least until the electricity is uh, turned back on. And we will uh, be live with you again tonight at 6 o'clock, Kelly, to bring you even more information from here from Castor. Tough, tough time for that town. They're just going to take the time to not only rebuild, but heal emotionally. So we'll check back in with you tonight at 6. Thanks so much sure. for that, Gwen. Sure. Also, the damage is very severe in Marshall, Texas. The biggest losses are at businesses along Highway 59 near Interstate 20. About 150 cars were damaged by hail and high winds at Nile Chevrolet. The showroom building and the shop were also damaged. And right across the street, the Domino's Pizza building was destroyed. And a dozen mobile homes were damaged at Delta Manufactured Housing. Business owners estimate those losses could be more than a million dollars. Several residential areas were all team meteorologist Mike Pass, who has tracked these storms throughout the night. He's in our forecast center now. And Mike, even though the storms have passed through, this is going to be another very busy day for the National Weather Service. Kelly, you're exactly right. In fact, I just uh, talked to the National Weather Service within the last 15 minutes, and they tell me that they have three teams just from our local Shreveport office on the way out in the field right now to investigate the storms to try to figure out how many tornadoes actually touched down in the Arklatex. Now, the person I spoke with out there didn't seem to have any trouble with my numbers of a half a dozen or more tornadoes actually touching down. We actually had four to six supercell thunderstorms visit the Arklatex. These are the kind that produce most of the severe weather that we get and certainly most of the tornadoes in the country. The first one actually started up around Broken Bow. If you were watching the weather all day yesterday, that one was early. It was around 2.15 in the afternoon. We had reports of a tornado and damage around Broken Bow. It moved over toward the Dequeen area. Later on, the storms developed in northeast Texas that eventually moved into northwest Louisiana. But each one of these had a long track and a long history, and they moved from southeast Oklahoma and northeast Texas into northwest Louisiana damage. So we had at least Six tornadoes hit the Arklatex. The number may actually be a dozen, depending on whether the National Weather Service will count the tornado that hit Marshall as a different tornado than hit Castor, even though they came 
from the same parent cell. I'll have more coming up in a few minutes and a complete Storm Team 7-day forecast, Kelly. And one of the town's hardest hit was Castor, Louisiana, and Bienville Parish. These are aerial shots of the town, and as you can see, there is widespread devastation in that small town of Castor. KTBS 3's Gwen Campbell has been in Castor all day, and Gwen, downtown Castor was almost leveled, wasn't it? Pretty much, Sherry. The people in Castor are literally picking up the pieces after a tornado hit their small town so hard yesterday evening that the only downtown business left standing was the post office. We are in downtown Castor, and what you're seeing behind me are energy power crews who have been here throughout the morning and throughout the night and all day long trying to restore power to the residents here, the 280 residents here. There's no water, no electricity, and no phone service here. And Sherry, as I said, all day long, people have been literally picking up the pieces. I've met a lot of people today, have shared a lot of emotions with them about their losses. I've talked to some people who have been in business here in downtown Castor for 30 years. But I talked to a lady today, Mert Myrick, who uh, had the only flower shop in downtown uh, Castor. She had been here only five years. She said her business had just started picking up. She had just started to see a profit, and now this happened. Here's what she had to say about her experience. I had the flower shop here. When did you first see it? Last night. I was there until about midnight. Ever seen anything like this happen? Not this bad. Not this bad. You'll be able to rebuild? Is it? Is it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Only good Lord knows. <laughs> So that was your business, that was your life, huh? Yes, it was. Many people tell me here that their businesses here in downtown Castor, that was their life. A lot of them spending every nickel and dime, their blood, their sweat and tears, setting up their businesses here. Very devastating. Another area of devastation here in Castor, Castor School. Uh, voters here one year ago uh, passed a $2.5 million bond issue to renovate and build a brand new wing to the school. Well, the school is so badly damaged that school has been canceled for the rest of the week. Mm. So the devastation here has hit the small town very hard. A lot of emotion here. But people are pulling together. They're all coming to the aid of each other. And uh, they say they don't know how and they don't know when, but they will rebuild here in Castor. Oh, man, Gwen. The, the heart of so many communities is in downtown. You just hate to see that. Appreciate Certainly. it. Well Good evening, everyone. I'm Charles Hadlock, reporting live from downtown Shreveport, which took a direct hit in yesterday's storm. Gwen Campbell is in a nearby town in Louisiana, which, which was very hard hit, Castor, Louisiana. Gwen? And I'm Gwen Campbell, live we'll with Earthlink. Shreveport, where... And I'm uh, Gwen Campbell, live with Earthlink 3 in Castor, Louisiana. One of the towns in the Arklatex recovering from devastating storms that cut a path of destruction from as far away as Sevier County in Arkansas all the way down here to Bienville Parish in Castor, Louisiana. Good evening. Thanks. Live in Castor, Louisiana with Earthlink 3, another area hard hit by storms on Easter Sunday. Now, Castor is a small Louisiana town, a population of about 280 people. Uh, it's about 10 miles southeast of Ringo, Louisiana, just to give you an idea of where we're located. As you can see from this aerial footage, the storm just about demolished the downtown area of this small town. The damage to the community is very severe. I've been here all day. I've talked with the residents here. The emotions are high, but people are pulling together. They are shocked, but they want to rebuild their community. Here's a look. Pastor Mayor Lane Freeman clears away what's left of City Hall. City crews clear metal sheets from Castro's only downtown convenience store. State workers bring dump trucks to carry away the debris left behind by Sunday's tornado. Every downtown business is destroyed. The hopes and dreams of their owners ruined. 
There's a lot of cleaning up to do. And of course, we, I guess we'll take it aboard and stick it at time. Castro's school improved just last year with a $2.5 million bond issue has no roof, no windows, and no temporary buildings. Students were supposed to come back to school tomorrow after the Easter break, but the superintendent has canceled school for the rest of the week. After that, he doesn't know when students will come back to school because there's so much damage. Scores of homes are damaged, 10 of them with major destruction. Betty Bogan can tell you how her home was damaged. She was inside. I tried to pull out the desk chair and get under, and just as I started to crawl under, I felt the house shake, and I said, oh, God, it's, it's happened. The property loss in Castor is the worst most residents say they have ever seen. And today they will tell you they don't know what they will do or how the small town will recover. They just believe that it will happen. A lot of faith here in this community, in the town of Castor, Louisiana. Uh, people are just wondering how they will make it. But let me tell you, you can see some activity behind me. These are Intergy, Energy Power uh, crews. They've been here throughout the night, throughout the morning. They've been here all day. They're working to restore power here. There's no power, there's no phone service, there's no water. But they hope that they can get everything uh, started back in the right direction. And again, Charles, the people here say they are hopeful. That's all they have right now, Gwen, uh, is hope. Uh, a lot of that town is missing tonight, and a lot of people are hurting. Thanks, Gwen. We'll check back with you in a moment. We have you about uh, from the city of Marshall, Texas, which was hit yesterday afternoon by those terrible twisters. The Marshall Fire Department has just completed a survey and found that 117 homes and 21 businesses were damaged. That does not include some homes and businesses which were damaged outside the city limits of Marshall. The figure is twice as high as original estimates, but Marshall Fire Chief Kenneth Snyder says the good news is no one was hurt. We feel like we're very, very lucky to have a storm of, uh, uh, of this size and uh, of this extent not to have any injuries. We were very fortunate we were able to sound uh, an early warning to our, our people, and I think that the uh, people in this community responded, and I think that helped a lot. As the chief said, they had an aerial warning siren. Those went off when the National Weather Service issued its tornado warning for Harrison County late yesterday. The that word today, miracle, indeed, that is what has happened here. When we come back, though, some of the dramatic home video from yesterday's storms, KTBS 3 News and a live news coverage of the Easter storms continues. This is a KTBS 3 News special. The Easter storms, the day after. Welcome back to our special coverage. I'm Gwen Campbell reporting live via Earthlink 3 from Castor, Louisiana. Here's a question for you. Where were you yesterday when all the storms began to roll through? Some people were in their cars, some folks were at home, and there were some of us who ran for cover. But some people uh, went and grabbed their video cameras and headed out into the storm to get some videotape. Our Kelly Fry gives us a look and a listen to some pretty incredible home video. It looks like a tornado. It looks like it could be one. Minutes later, Mike and Suzanne Knotts realize it is. They're traveling I-49 just south of Frierson in the thick of the storm, watching this funnel cloud loom overhead. Mike, we're looking. We're getting awfully close to it. Yeah. I see it. Mike, that's a tornado. Look at it! Look at his tail! Oh, gee. Oh, my God. We're almost in it. The Knotts family is saved. The tornado passes them by. But in another car on Highway 343 in northern Caddo Parish, Chris Dugan, a friend, and their dog, Spud, are forced to pull off the road. Here's the bridge. We must get in the bridge. We must get under the bridge. The storm is wild. Two men hide underneath the bridge, but the dog won't come. Bird, get out of the truck! Bird, Bird, get out of the truck! Get under the bridge! They watch and wait as the raging winds whip the trees and brush. I don't think it's strong enough to carry the truck. Finally, it subsides. There's our tornado, yeah. 
Kurt Thurman can't believe his eyes. He watches through the lens of his video camera as a funnel cloud quickly forms into a full-blown tornado. A debris cloud swirls around its base, proof that that tornado is on the ground and coming towards his home on Cross Lake. At this point, Kurt shuts off his camera and runs for cover. His family is also lucky. That tornado heads another direction. Kelly Fry, KGBS 3 News. Wow, their service. Actually, today are sitting down to decide whether there were storms or tornadoes or high winds or just what it is that we got on yesterday. Let's go to our expert, our storm team meteorologist, Mike Pass, who's in the Weather Center. Uh, Mike, what can you tell us about what hit all of us yesterday? Well, Gwen, in my opinion, a lot of tornadoes all over the Arklatex, as you've been testifying and showing us the damage there in Castor. No doubt about it, Castor was hit by a tornado. In fact, a pretty mean tornado visited that area, unfortunately. And we had a whole family, an extremely unusual event. You could live here 50 years and not see a repeat of what we had yesterday in the Arklatex easily. Uh, at least a half a dozen tornadoes, probably more like 10 to 12 tornadoes, came out of six different supercell thunderstorms visiting the Arklatex yesterday. This is a slow motion repeat of yesterday afternoon and evening's weather. We had three storms out ahead of a line, and the line helped to produce the uh, tornadoes, but those three cells out ahead did most of the damage. There were many damage tracks across the Arklatex. They started at Broken Bow in southeast Oklahoma. That was the first one around 2.15 in the afternoon and gradually descended across the Arklatex, but these are all different thunderstorm tracks. If you have home video, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a call at 86- Welcome back, everyone. I'm Gwen Campbell reporting live via Earthlink 3 from Castor, Louisiana, a small town in about 10 miles southeast of Ringgold that is literally picking up the pieces after the storms on yesterday. We need to give you some latest information on power outages, and you can see that there are energy crews working right behind me at this very hour. Uh, Swepco has 25,000 um, 25, uh, customers in northwest Louisiana who are without power at this very hour. Uh, they are working around the clock. They are predicting that, that they will have that power restored by Wednesday or either early on Friday. Now in East Texas, 1,500 customers are without power. Uh, they're telling us there that it should be back on by midnight tonight. And Energy, the folks who are here in Castro, Louisiana, are saying that they have about 7,700 customers who are without power. They're hoping to get, their, their crews are working around the clock, they're hoping to get that power restored back by nightfall tonight. So that is the latest. Now, uh, no school closures to report to you in Caddo or Bossier parishes, but here in Castor, uh, school, the superintendent has canceled school for the remainder of the week so that they can assess da the damages here. So, Charles, a lot of information that we need to pass on to people, news that they need to know. You bet, Gwen, and there's some more information to pass along, too. You know, I believe, looking at the pictures there in Castor, that has to be the worst damage in the Arklatex. Charles, the people here tell me that they have never seen damage like this in the town of Castor, and these are people who have lived here 30, 40 50 years, but let me tell you something. This town was hit so hard that every single business in downtown Castor was leveled, except for one, and that was the post office. Everything else is gone. About eight to 10 homes have major damage. Other homes throughout this area have also been hit by the damage. But you know, even though the damage here was so severe, so devastating, people kept asking me about the damage in Shreveport they wanted to know how people in Shreveport were doing. And I thought that was very touching. A lot of things I found touching here. A lot of things I found to be very emotional. Like the guy that I met, Charles Harper, a man who owned the general store here in Castro, Louisiana for 30 years. But he woke up this morning to find that it was gone. And I cried myself to sleep this morning at three o'clock. Still yeah. I've been there 20 years now, but I had come up here to loaf of bread, and I got caught right beside it in my in my truck, and I thought I was gonna die. So you're gonna rebuild, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, we'll it'll take you a little while. Oh yeah, it'll be a while. Yeah. Oh. yeah.
They can't tell you how, they can't tell you when, but the folks here in Castor will tell you that they will rebuild. Uh, just uh, touching emotion here from this small town where they've been hit so hard. You know, another city that was hit hard by the storms is Marshall, Texas. KTBS 3's John Gordon brings us up to date on the cleanup efforts in that city. There's enough timber down in Marshall to keep fireplaces burning for years. And the damage is still adding up. Business owners say their losses could easily top $1 million. About 150 cars were damaged at Nile Chevrolet Olds Cadillac. It was right in the path of the tornado as it touched down on Highway 59 near Interstate 20. High winds blew out windows and damaged the showroom and garage, while hail pounded every new car and truck on the lot. But the owners haven't lost their sense of humor. It's uh, quite a bit of damage that we're taking care of, but we're doing a good job on getting it ready, and I guess we'll have one giant hail of a sale. Across the highway, Domino's Pizza was demolished, and a dozen mobile homes were damaged at Delta Manufactured Homes. One was tossed on top of another mobile home, upside down. Those who live in the neighborhoods hit by the tornado found they were not alone in dealing with the disaster. Volunteers from area churches came to cook them a hot meal. And they also brought along their chainsaws to help them clean up. We appreciate you guys being out here. Residents say they appreciate the help from the East Texas Disaster Relief Organization, part of the Southern Baptist Convention. About 35 volunteers came to Marshall. We just believe that the Lord tells us if we offer a cup of water in Jesus' name that uh, we will be blessed and the people will be blessed and it's just our way of offering a cup of water and a plate of food and a little bit of our service and time to help them to get back on their feet. Dozens of homes in South and West Marshall were damaged by falling trees and high winds. Utility crews have been working to restore power to the area. It's a storm that delivered such a punch. Many Marshall residents were saying an extra prayer on Easter Sunday. You can't describe it in words. It's just insurmountable. It's, it's, it's just awesome. I'm just thankful, very thankful to even be breathing and just living. I really am. In Marshall, John Gordon, KTBS 3 News. The damage is so extensive, you're probably wondering how will these small cities like Castor and Marshall get the money to rebuild? Well, the Marshall Assistant City Manager, Frank Johnson, says he is not sure that there's enough damage in the Marshall area to ask for a disaster declaration and for federal assistance, but Johnson says the possibility has not been ruled out. Charles? Uh, until the end of the week. Uh, I know that in Castor, Louisiana, that is a different electric service company, but I know crews there are also working to get the lights back on as quickly as possible to the buildings that are left there, Gwen. Charlie, that's right. The energy people are here. They've got about 7,700 customers out, and they are hoping to get uh, many folks here in the town of Castor back on by midnight tonight. But right now, Charlie, we need to let uh, parents and teachers and students know about school closures. There were several Caddo schools closed today, but we have talked to the Caddo School Superintendent, Dr. Robert Schiller, who says that he is out uh, t this afternoon. He is surveying the schools before he will make a decision about tomorrow. Now here in Castor, in Bienville Parish Schools, students were to return tomorrow from Easter break. They were out Friday and they were out Monday. But the superintendent of the Bienville Parish School System uh, tells me that uh, he has canceled school for the remainder of the week uh, for here at Castor School. Here at Castor School, students will not report, students and teachers will not report to school for the rest of the work. This will give him time to assess the damages here. We want you to stay tuned to KTBS 3 News at 10 o'clock tonight for even more information about school closings. Now, we've got more uh, Storm Team coverage ahead for you, including some almost unbelievable video from folks who braved the storm to capture it on home video. It's next. Welcome back, everyone. The day after Easter for the folks here in Castor, Louisiana, is a day of hope. The mayor tells me that stick by stick, brick by brick, they will rebuild, Charles. The same goes for downtown Shreveport. You heard the mayor say that, that this area will be uh, uh, refurbished uh, when, the, uh, when the storm cleanup begins. It's already underway. They're just waiting for more federal money. That's our coverage. We'll see you again at 10. Have a good, good night. night.
Good night, everyone. Some high lines back up. Been working on them. So that fleece is trailer over.
out to everyone that they are rebuilding. They're pulling together. Uh, they're still sifting through the rubble. But Kelly, you probably won't believe this, but just um, just to be able to look at the progress that's been made today, just since this time yesterday, you can tell that this town is on definitely on its way back. I've got a guy with me, though, who can probably tell me a lot more about the rebuilding. Lloyd Elkins is with Energy, a power company here in Louisiana, and they're actually having to rebuild the entire energy system here. How's it going so far? It's going very well. When we came in here Monday morning, we had 17 structures, poles, wires, transformers, laying on the ground here in the town of Castor, and we had to come in and completely rebuild our system. We're at the point now that we have all the poles, conductors, back up in the city limits, and we energized the main feeder about 30 minutes ago, and right now we have approximately 200 customers still without power. That is great. Now, um, Lloyd, you can tell us right now, and uh, this is uh, news that no one has gotten yet, but you guys have already, um, I want to say, energized that main power line. That's correct. Uh, before we energized the power line, we had about a thousand customers out here in Castor that feeds on down to uh, Ashland and the rural areas down there. And right now we have about 200 customers out and hopefully we have the majority of those on before we quit tonight. Wow. All right. Thanks, Lloyd. Thanks so much. You guys are working very, very hard. Working around the clock here, Kelly. Uh, and again, Castor is rebuilding. You know, the mayor told me yesterday, he said, stick by stick brick by brick we are rebuilding all right good news out of there this morning thanks so much gwen downtown castor louisiana all you'll see is the post office 
Severe winds destroyed all the other buildings Sunday. KTBS 3's Gwen Campbell is in Castor with an update on the damage. And Gwen, I know that churches were not even spared the wrath of the storms. That's right, Sherry. There are three churches here in the small town of Castor, Louisiana. Two of them escaped damage, but one church was damaged so badly that the uh, co members of the congregation tell me today that they just don't know where they're going to meet on Sunday. It's a church who's been, that has been in the town for 88 years. It's the, ch the historic church of Bienville Parish. The name of the church is the Castor United Methodist Church. And today, Sherry, I went inside to take a look and I want you to see what I saw. Yeah. See, the tree was all the way down into here, and we had to have two skidders and a bulldozer to lift it up, not, so the rest of the windows would not come in. We just bought all these. I mean, these, these just came in like a week or two ago, and we had them all placed out, and we lost some of them. Some are water damaged and everything, and um, we lost... You know, pews and everything, they're all damaged. They went up and measured the boards, and uh, now I've got to get a contractor. But my problem is I don't have enough money. Yeah. My insurance is not enough to um, probably cover it. So I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to have church Sunday if it's not raining. And we'll either have it outside or maybe over here in the corner or even in the back the back wasn't damaged so we can have it um in the back um but we will have church and that just goes to show you the hope of the uh, folks, the residents here in Castor, Louisiana. They have the hope that they will rebuild. Now, as Castor rebuilds, the religious community wants to bring together everyone here in this area. They're calling for a prayer service tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at the First Baptist Church here in Castor. What they want to do is for all of the residents, all the people in this area to come together and to pray and to be thankful that in the midst of all this devastation of all of the losses that no one was killed no lives were lost everyone was spared in this so uh, Sherry uh, will come back at six o'clock and we'll show you uh, some of the rebuilding efforts that are underway today uh, it's 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 heartwarming to see that these folks aren't sitting back they are rebuilding it's a town on the mend you bet and our prayers go out to all those people there and their rebuilding efforts Gwen and we know you'll keep us updated on Castor's progress We'll go back. There was fear under those angry clouds Sunday night. You can hear it in their voices. Man, that's it right above us, Dad. Yeah, well, let's get us what hit. That's it, man. Get in the house. Get in the house. When we jumped in the bathtub, John David got a little tear in his eye and wanted to know what we should do. And um, I told him we'd probably do best to say a prayer, so we did. And Nancy Knowles said a prayer. I see it. I'm like, that's a tornado. So did lots of others. Oh, gee. Oh, my God. I said, peace be still in the name of Jesus. <laughs> but did God have anything to do with Sunday night? Did he, for instance, intentionally send this tornado to destroy only this woman's Cross Lake home, sparing everything around her? Or was it a random act of nature? And I can't imagine she was somebody that God was mad at, you know. And really, my God doesn't get mad at anybody. You shall see hail fall from a clear sky. But he used to. Throughout the Old Testament, God sent various forms of judgment, often using natural forces. getting the attention of his people, mm -hmm. rattling their cage, so to speak, to uh, draw them back uh, to himself. Sonny Simpson pastors Willow Point Baptist Church. He does not believe this Easter storm was an act of God's wrath, but rather a result of man's original sin. The consequences of the curse of sin upon the earth that came back in the Garden of Eden we are running from the tornado. Pastor Simpson believes the natural harmony in God's original plan was disrupted by this sin, and these natural disasters are the result. Indeed, the Bible refers to the earth's groaning and likens these events to the birth pains of a woman. The earth is trying to give 
a birth to something that is better and something that is good. Many religious leaders see these and other natural disasters as evidence of the nearing of the end of this age. And they believe as that grows closer, the birth pains will increase. As sure as we live, these things are going to happen. But the hope of it all, Rick, is the, is the fact that one day we're going to be delivered from it. And uh, there is a new heaven, there's a new earth, there's a plan that God has for eternity. Campbell live with Earthlink 3 in downtown Castor, Louisiana, where we began our continuing coverage of the Easter storms live in Castor, a place where the governor has declared Bienville Parish a disaster area, but in Castor, the word disaster does not exist. The 280 residents are over the shock of the devastation, and they are starting to rebuild. <laughs> Since Sunday's tornado, the only light that Douglas and Willis Smith had was daylight. But today they were among 1,000 Entergy customers that had their electricity restored. Entergy's crews of nearly 200 were all over town and in outlying areas, installing new poles, new wires, and new transformers. They are rebuilding an entire system. We had to start from scratch and rebuild the entire system. We had to replace the poles, conductors, transformers, and yesterday afternoon we got all of the poles and all set and today about 12 o'clock we heated that line back up and we got all of our customers back on but approximately 200. By afternoon Bell South crews from Ruston and West Monroe joined in Pastor's rebuilding efforts. This is a town on the mend. Insurance adjusters at Castor School putting together an immediate plan to rebuild damaged classrooms, windows, computers, and the school's high school gym. And today, the insurance adjuster is here, and he's been climbing on the roof. You might, yeah, there they are over there. Yeah. He's uh, been climbing on the roof and just looking at all the damage and trying to get with our construction people and determine exactly how much damage has been done and, and trying to figure out the best way to get it repaired as quickly as possible. Yeah. Able to rebuild after all this? I hope so. Yeah. I was born and raised around here. And I hope everybody can come back from it. Uh, I think they'll recover, rebuild, start over again, you know. <laughs> Now here's the very latest information from here. As of this hour, Energy reports only 50 customers in this area without power. They hope to have those 50 customers back online by tomorrow. Now tomorrow is a day of prayer here. Castor's First Baptist Church is calling residents, area churches, people together who want to come together and pray for the blessing that lives were spared in, the, in Sunday's Easter storms. Charlie, some folks here are calling that a miracle. It certainly sounds like it. Thanks, Gwen. Louisiana are working hard to recover from Sunday's tornado that flattened most of the small town. Tonight, residents gathered to pray. A Shreveport church opened its doors to member Sherry Allen. We thank you for joining us. The last three days have presented some big challenges for people in one small town in the Arklatex. Castor, Louisiana was all but demolished by Sunday's tornadoes, but the people are determined, and they got a quick start on putting their lives back together. KTBS 3 News reporter Vince Sims is live in Castor tonight with Earthlink 3. Vince, I understand they had a prayer service there tonight. Yes, they did, Charles, and it was a very emotional night here in Castor. More than 150 people packed the First Baptist Church here in Castor to give praise and thanks for what they've come through. Now, the church was packed with people as they came to give thanks for all that they've come through. They were praising God for sparing their church during the tornado. Now, the night of the tornado, about 20 people were inside the church that Sunday when it hit. Now, less than 100 yards away, buildings were destroyed and also homes. Now, the church only lost a few shingles. And this miracle is why people were here tonight. The quicker we get it behind us and begin to look at what's going to lie ahead in the future, I think that those wounds will heal with time. It'll take some time. It has been a, uh, a bad experience. You've seen it yourself, and it's nothing but a higher power could have kept us from being injured or killed. I truly believe that. He's an awesome God. 
Now, after the service, a town hall meeting was held to t inform residents of the fact that the National Guard is here in town. The 527 Engineering Battalion Army National Guard out of Ruston is here to help with cleanup efforts. And then Mr. Lloyd Elkins with the Energy Corporation told the city that they will be donating $10,500. 5,500 will go to build a new temporary city hall here in Castor. Another 5,000 will be donated to First Baptist Church because this has been like the central headquarters for the crews that have been working with energy. So, Charles, it was a very emotional night here. And I must say that if there any indication of what the emotions that I saw at the prayer service tonight, the members of this town will have no problem rebuilding and moving on from this devastation. Vince Sims reporting live from Castor tonight. Thanks, Vince. The Red Cross is setting up a service center in Castor. It will open tomorrow and remain open each day through at least Saturday. They will be helping to replace things like eyeglasses, clothing, and other necessities. Be sure and bring a utility bill with you as proof of your residence. And it's... This is White's Auto Store. Oh, the front's bad. Uh,
is too old. PBS 3 News continues. Cleanup efforts across the Arklatex are now in day four, but this is the first day since Sunday that residents have had to deal with rain. KTBS 3's Gwen Campbell is back in Castor, Louisiana tonight. And Gwen, how much has the rain gotten in the way of cleanup efforts there? Well, you know, Sherry, when the cleanup began on Monday, the residents here in Castor kept saying to me, now, if it just won't rain. Well, the KTBS 3 storm team of meteorologists began predicting rain, and today, Castor's newest fear came falling from the sky. At about 11.30 this morning, rain showers hit just as residents continued to clean up the debris left by Sunday's Easter tornado. And believe it or not, no one stopped working. The National Guard continued its assistance, helping to clear giant trees and other debris from yards and from roadways. And the American Red Cross today opened its disaster service center here in Castor. For the next two days, they will work to meet the needs of residents who are now beginning to get their lives and their homes back together. Now today, most residents here in Castor have electricity, they have phone service, they have their water service, and the town's mayor says that is a good sign an indication of the days to come. It looks like it, uh, it's beginning to shape up a little. Since, uh, we do have people here picking up the debris, and uh, it's going to take a while to ever, you know, really heal everything, but it looks good at this point. We've seen like needs it. for, uh, obviously, your emergency needs being shelter, uh, clothing, food, that type of thing. Those are our emergency needs that we look to, uh, most importantly, um, referrals uh, to other agencies who might can help them in minimal ways, that type of thing. So anything that's emergency-based, we're going to do everything we can. Now, the Red Cross Service Center is located at the First Baptist Church right here in Castor. They will be open today from 9 to 6, today, tomorrow, and Saturday if they're needed. Now, with more rain predicted uh, for this afternoon, Castor residents tell me that they're a little nervous and you know they've got to be thinking about the storms, the tornado that hit them on Sunday. Uh, they are tuned to KTBS 3. They're watching, and we'll have more news for you and for them tonight at 6. Quinn, they kept working through the rain. That, <laughs> that gives you a glimpse of the community spirit in Castor, doesn't it? Certainly does. All right. Appreciate it. And your help is... To the Arklatex, victims from Sunday's tornadoes scramble to save what's left of their homes and their possessions. Good evening, everyone. I'm Gwen Campbell, live in Castor, Louisiana, with Earthlink 3. And I'm Charles Hadlock. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'll have a live update for you on how the small town is recovering from Sunday's brutal tornado. That's coming up. But first tonight, the night of Sunday's Easter storms, total damage from northwest Louisiana could top $40 million. That's the word today from the State Insurance Commissioner, Jim Brown. Let's go back to Gwen Campbell now, who's live in Castor, Louisiana, with Earthlink 3. Gwen? Charles, we are live with Earthlink 3. We're at the downtown hub of Castor, Louisiana, the site of the major devastation that hit the small town on Sunday. You know, when the cleanup began on Monday, uh, residents here kept telling me, if it just won't rain, if it just won't rain. Well, the KTBS 3 storm team predicted the rain that began to fall on Castor this morning, this afternoon, and at this very hour, with a prediction of some severe thunderstorms for the evening. But you know, when you mix rain and debris, you've got a big old mess. But the residents here in Castor who are determined to fight back told me today that the rain was only a minor inconvenience. They knew the rain was coming, and they knew they'd have to work in it. 
Harold Byrd had no roof at his corner store, but the cleanup had to be done. Now, you knew the rain was coming, huh? Yeah, I knew the rain was coming. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't do anything because I had to wait on my adjuster. And he just got here last night, so we're just getting what we can today, which is not a whole lot. Castor residents worked hard to cover their property. Willard Sullivan had just covered his son's mobile home. He got to make a, a itemized list of his contents. And so how you gonna make an itemized list of, a, of what you got left? Most people in Castor don't have much left, but what little they do have, they're doing their best to save it. Ray and Frank Griffith covered the roof of their mother's house and kept working to clear the debris. Just work around it the best we can. Larry Loud plans to demolish this house. He says it's 100 years old. But for those Castor residents who will rebuild, today's rain was only a minor inconvenience when you consider what they want. Now, work continued at Castor School today. That is because tomorrow is the day that the principal, Mary Atkins, will make the decision whether school will open next week. You know, school has been closed all this week. Now, we will be here tomorrow in Castor for her decision, and we'll let you know exactly what she says. Um, and that's it from here in Castor. But what a lot of people here want to know is uh, if the rain will continue and if there's some severe weather ahead. Get that in your Storm Team forecast. It's coming up next. Castor's prom had to be called off because Sunday's twister destroyed the school gym where they planned to hold the prom. But it will go on. Tonight at 7, students in tuxedos and fancy dresses will converge on the Architects Antique Auto and Classic Car Museum in Shreveport. The folks at the museum volunteered the building after hearing about Castor High School's predicament. Castor students have had to break, at, that is, have had a break this week because of storm damage at their school, but they are scheduled to return to school on Tuesday. Teachers will head back on Monday. Hundreds of people... The Louisiana National Guard will work through the weekend to clear debris from pastors' school grounds. Electric crews will work as long as it will take to rebuild the school's entire electrical system and restore power. And 250 classroom windows just on this side of the elementary school will have to be replaced this weekend. The plan is to open Castor School on Tuesday. Principal Mary Atkins wants teachers to report Monday for a work day. They will check their computers and other classroom equipment, sort through what's left and what's salvageable to get their classrooms ready. We have to do without our library because uh, the carpet is soaked and the ceiling is still leaking. Um, three of my elementary classrooms will have to go somewhere else for class, probably to the church next door because their rooms are still leaking very badly. Insurance adjusters won't put a dollar amount on damage to the school, but Atkins knows for sure that the elementary building, the high school building, and the school gym all need new roofs. Crews are lined up to begin their work next week. Students at Castor Elementary School won't be allowed on the playground until all the debris is cleared away. But they won't have any playground equipment. The tornado and high winds blew it all away. It will take a lot of work to get Castor School back to where it was for students and teachers. Mary Atkins knows that, but for now, her priority is to get the building in good enough shape where it is safe for children to learn. Here's a reminder for Castor parents and children. Monday, teachers report to school for a work day. Tuesday, all Castor school children will report to classes for a regular day of school. Here's a little more information to pass along. Dress in cool clothing. Principal Atkins says there probably won't be any air conditioning, and there's no damage to the school cafeteria, so students will get lunch. The National Guard is camping out in the high school gym. They'll be there throughout next week, too. But they were sent home. Buses and cars were turned around after school administrators determined there was just too much water in the school to hold classes. School has been canceled until further notice. This would have been the first day back for students since the Easter Sunday tornado ripped the roof off the school complex. 
Principal Mary Adkins had worked with teachers, contractors, construction, electric crews, trying to get the school ready for classes today. Some temporary roof patching was done, but this morning's rain flooded the entire school. When I woke up at 3 o'clock, it was raining, and all I could think about was how much water is going to be in that building when I get there. And uh, I was right. There was a lot of water in there when I got there. Adkins says the Bienville Parish School Board will meet Thursday night to determine if efforts to continue will continue to be made to try to open the school, or if maybe the governor might grant permission to declare the school year over for Castor students. We'll keep you informed. Jurors and former Governor Edwin Edwards' federal racket. It's just uh, yeah. been more of a problem. So even this far out, people still need your help. So mm -hmm. uh, go by any bank one and see what you can do. Good Thanks deal. a lot, Janine. Mm -hmm. Who is at risk? This morning's downpour of heavy rain flooded the already heavily damaged school. And if you thought the tornado damage was rough, look at the school today with Castor Principal Mary Atkins. When we got to school, there was a lot of water coming through the roof in the elementary building and um, in the high school building as well. And then we've had some more leaks in the junior high building. And we had, in fact, we had leaks in every building. We were prepared for some leakage, but we weren't prepared for that much. The mixture of electricity and water was probably not a good thing. Yeah. We just decided it would be best to send those kids back home, so we just turned the buses back around. It seems like we have more water coming through the roof now than we did before. And I don't know, maybe it's because the rain we got last week, last Thursday, we got that little bit of rain, and then maybe it just got everything wet. I guess maybe things just haven't dried out enough to, to allow, you know, the proper repairs. So kids are home until further notice? Kids are home until further notice. Okay. And, you, and you're just going to try to do what you can? Right. I think I'm going to go home and take a nap. I hope Mary got a chance to take that nap. You know, because it was before noon and already it had been a long day for Principal Mary Atkins. Now here's a few things on tap for Castor School. The Bienville Parish School covers from a devastating tornado. Residents say it's a sign of progress. The city of Castor looks a lot cleaner in many places. It's tough to find debris from the Easter Sunday tornado, a twister that destroyed every single business in town. Today, residents will tell you the tornado was only a temporary setback. Under a damaged roof, the general store is open. Crews are busy working to rebuild the town's bank. This business gets a new roof, and Castor Mayor Lane Freeman has a new city hall. A temporary building just feet from the concrete slab of what was Castor's city hall. Inside, everything is new because everything was lost. Basically, everything had to be replaced. The water damage or surge problems on the equipment, it all had to be replaced. And so we have new computers and new copying machines, and uh, all the supplies are also replaced. City clerk Joanne Sutton works to learn a new computer system and rebuild the files and records that were lost. They're waterlogged and bumpy and um, uh, everything, but we'll get some new ones and we'll work with some of the things we have. No, I'm glad to be back at work so I can get everything back in order eventually. While the town is bouncing back, the Thursday opening of Castro School is being met with some pretty vocal complaints from a group of parents. They have called a community meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. They say they want some, quote, straight answers from Bienville School Superintendent about the condition and the safety of the school. Now, Castro School is open today and tomorrow for teachers. They're getting their classrooms ready for students on Thursday. Maybe you can hear the thunder. We've got This Friday, it will be two months since the Easter tornado destroyed every single business in downtown Castor. Efforts to rebuild are slow, but residents are determined to make Castor the town it used to be. We are just like we were two days after the storm. We're still waiting on our insurance company to, to pay us. Charles Harper is tired of waiting. He wants to get on with the business of rebuilding his general store. This Friday will be two months since an Easter Sunday tornado destroyed his family business and Castor's only general store. 
A small portion of the store is open. There's still not much of a roof. But Harper says just today, again, his insurance agent told him the check is in the mail. We're waiting patiently, and you know, to get started. I, I want to have the check in my hand before I start to rebuild. Across the street, construction crews work to rebuild Castor's only bank. Castor's school gets major repair this summer. A temporary city hall waits while the mayor gets bids on a permanent facility. You'll see a lot of new roofs on homes, some just this week finally beginning to repair the damage. Charles Harper says it makes him feel good to see Castor on the grow. He just wants to be a part of the progress. It'll be, I uh, believe, two months Friday since the storm hit, and we have not received anything from the insurance company yet except the checks in the mail, and it's not in the mail yet. Castor Mayor Lane Freeman agrees that insurance companies have been slow, but he tells his residents to just be patient because just today, City Hall got its insurance check. Freeman says he's now talking with builders for bids on a new and permanent City Hall. Even though the...